Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Welcome in NFL Week 16 previews. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is Winning Cures Everything. We, uh, we do a lot of football talk here, in case you didn't notice. So, if you are new to the program... Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave us some comments, tell us what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show, tell us what your picks are this week, all that wonderful stuff. We got some uh, we got some good games this week. Really fun games, I think. Uh, there's some massive stuff. Like it, it, it seems like sometimes you get to the end of the NFL season and there's, you know, if one team has to win, the other one is already out of it, you know, you get a lot of those kind of matchups. I mean, we're still fighting for seeding, we're still fighting for all this. Now we've got teams that are trying to still get in. Some of them need help, and uh, and yeah, you're right. I mean the the Forty ers could easily go from the number one seed to the fifth seed, and vice versa. I mean you got the Packers and the Saints both vying for like number two seed here. Yep. I mean you, you still got a buy up for grabs. You you got the AFC issues where at, look the Chiefs own the tiebreaker over the Pats. Yeah, Pats who, still have to play have a two seed, and yeah, yeah, they still got the Bills this week. So they've got a game up on the Chiefs. Who we got a lot to discuss. Uh, the show is always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can go find more information on them, along with all the other stuff going on down in Tunica, over at tunicatravel.com. Go check that out. And we have a pick'em contest every single week. Go and check that bad boy out over at winningcureseverything.com. Click on the football picks contest. I will have it updated this week with all of the different spreadsheets. I apologize to all of you that haven't been able to uh, keep track of the spreadsheet. Uh, you all have your own picks. Those are emailed back to you immediately. But the spreadsheet is not emailed back, and I apologize for that. So this week, though, it'll be up there on the site. You can go check it out. You can keep tabs on it and see what's happening. It'll. It's already up. It's already up. So go check it out. It's going to be a good time. The picks contest, always good prizes from Tunica, Mississippi. They uh, they sent me another stash. There you go. So we're going all the way through the playoffs with this. All right. And we're hey, once we get to the playoffs, because there's not going to be ten games to pick. That's right. We're gonna start doing props. Well, we got to. Oh, it's gonna we be. Got to come up with something to make it. it it's gonna be good stuff, man. I can't wait. I'm we're cool. gonna have like Tom Brady passing yards. Yeah. You know, it, that depends on if they got a a buy or not. You know, we'll see. Like, how many it, will Josh Allen have more rushing yards than passing yards? You know, whatever. So, we'll get into all of that. But yeah, go enter the uh, the picks contest. It's free. You enter your name, enter an email, and then pick all of them, multiple choice, easy stuff. Picking games against the spread. There's 10 of them this week. We got some bowl games thrown in there as well. It's, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, while you're at it, go check out smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN, that's W I N, for a 20% discount off of. Your order, no matter how big it is, you could order 25 shirts and you get 20% off. You use that promo code. Anything over $40, they're going to ship it to you for free. It's Christmas time. You got to get some stuff for your buddies. You got to get stuff for the family. If you're all pro or college fans, whatever it is, go check it out. I bet your team's on there. You will enjoy it. Smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN. Let's go ahead and fire into this thing. Game number one, NFL Week 16 previews. Monday Night Football. We're big, skipping way ahead. Big game. The Packers at the Vikings. Now, the Vikings are a five-point favorite. It's 7.15 p.m. on ESPN. U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. The Vikings looked like they were on a mission yes, last week. The Packers held out pretty well against the Bears, 21-13. I was surprised at this line. Yes, it's it's bigger than I thought it would be. It was four and a half yesterday. It's five today. Why why do you think they are not respecting the Packers right here? And I think a, a lot of the country sees what we have seen. The Packers. I don't know how they're winning games. Yeah, it's they don't <laughs> they don't look the Packers look a lot like the Patriots. The Patriots are losing games. The Packers are winning games, but. These offenses don't look great. Well, the now, Patriots the Packers, are also playing better teams. Well, and the Packers skill players, Aaron Jones and uh, uh, Aaron, what's uh, Adam Jones? That's it. Two Joneses are, yeah. are both looking really good. 
And they, they are substantially better than any skilled players that the Patriots have. And that's kind of carrying them. Yeah. They yeah. can make big enough plays to win. They don't have real good sustainable drives. Well, and their defense is, is still them. lights up. Keep, yeah. Oh, no, the defense, that's like the Patriots. The defense is keeping them in games. Yeah. They just need Aaron Rodgers to make one or two big plays a game. They can win the game. Um, and I just have been saying every week, I just don't think that's sustainable, and they still win. I don't think that's sustainable, and they get the win. At some point in time, you either got to put up or you're going to get put down. Yeah. Now, they're in the playoffs. Yeah. They're, they're in. Now we're trying to get who's going to win the division. And and that's where this comes in because the Vikings are only one game back. Yep. Uh, I don't so know what the tiebreaker. have the tiebreaker because they have the one win against them. If they split. The then it next, goes to conference standings and whatever. Yeah, else, I, don't, right? I don't know all of them. At some point in time, it's going to go to like common opponents records. But divisional wins, neither one of these teams have lost to a divisional team if they split with one another. They yeah. both have swept the Bears. They both, and the Vikings might still have a divisional game at the end of this, but. They got the the Lions or the Bears. Left. We assume they're going to be win that game, right? Yeah, I would think so. You know, I'll go to week seven. I would think so. Fast. But but yeah, it's just you're going to get into weird tiebreakers if the Vikings win this game. Yeah, and that's and a, I don't know what all of those are. Yeah, they have the Bears, so they've already swept the Lions. So and they got the Bears in Minnesota next week. Yeah, I would assume that they would uh, they would I handle think, that. I think they're going to beat that team too, just because they just done. Uh, do the uh, the Packers have the Lions next week? Probably because they always started. Yes, Packers are at the Lions. Okay, that doesn't scare me at all. Packers, no, Packers are no. Uh, however, I hear Matt Stafford might be back. So I don't, we'll see. So, so I heard. I read something completely different. I read that the injury could be substantially more severe than they originally thought. Now, what? It, What's amazing is you got broken bones in your back. Who would have thought that? There's a possibility that it could be way worse than they originally reported. Well, true. That, that made perfect sense to me when I read that. Well, yeah, but I, I'm just I'm surprised because like the last thing that I read was he could possibly play this weekend. Mine was Monday, so and we're I mean, it's a, yeah, Tuesday it's, night. That's when mine was. Hang on, let me just you keep on going. Um, Are we getting to the point where we're making a pick in this game? Yeah. I'm going Vikings. I'm going Vikings, too. I, I think they are going to roll the Packers here. I, their offense is playing great. I think I think Kevin Stefanski is going to have a job after this year. No, no chance. Oh, I think so. No chance. I, okay. No chance. We'll um, see. But he's doing great, and they're doing great. I'm, I'm so nervous because I'm picking Kirk Cousins in a major, major game against Aaron Rodgers. At home. It doesn't matter. I think it does matter. I don't. Now, I'm with it. I'm picking it. And nobody has crapped on Rodgers like I have over the last couple of years. I I just it makes you a little nervous. It makes me nervous. It if really it was a pisses field goal, me off that everybody's dumping dumping on Tom for virtually having the same record and same resume as Aaron Rodgers, and everybody's like, "Oh, look at Rodgers still doing it with not a great cast." <laughs> He's got two guys that would be the two best guys on the Patriots team. No, not even close, by yeah. the way. Not. Not close. He's probably got five guys that would be better than anybody on the Bats team right now. And and yet, and yet, oh, Tom's done. Well, oh, 42 years old, Father Tom. <laughs> Man, he must suck. It's time to hang it up, boys. Well, I think it I think it looks a little different the way they're doing it. Well, like, yeah, because one's 42 and the, the other well, yeah. one's like 37, 36. That's a, it, Aaron's just got a little more velocity on the ball. It's not much. But it's still not good. It's still not accurate. No, I mean, it, well, I – I don't know, man. He hadn't been great, dude. He he hadn't been great. Hadn't You're been right great. about that. You are right about he that. He throws a couple of balls that are just, I'm throwing this thing up in the air, and he's got a dude that goes up and gets it. Yeah. And Tommy don't have that dude. Yeah, you're probably right. Jimmy Graham is still more athletic than anybody on the Patriots team. That's true. Okay. No, you got a on valid point. You got a valid point. So anyway. All right, let's let's uh, let's move on to the next one. We, uh, we spent a little while on that one. That's the best game of the week. I agree. Cowboys at the Eagles. I forgot what I was supposed to look up. What was I, I have no look idea. Up? I have no idea. I don't <laughs> think it matters. matters. Doesn't matter. Anymore. Doesn't matter anymore. Cowboys at the Eagles. The Eagles are a three-point underdog at home. It's on Sunday, three twenty-five p.m. on Fox, Lincoln Financial Field in Philly. Now, Sunday afternoon, prime time spot. Do you realize that the the Cowboys Rams game from last week was like? the lowest rated in in years in that time spot, like for that week. I was really surprised by that. 
yeah, that's that's a little shocking because just the Cowboys alone kind of carry the water. Well, I think that so many so many Cowboys fans have been watching this team and they've lost all these big games in a row, and everybody yep. just assumed that the Rams were going to. Yeah, get, but you like, would think that like you realize they're kicking the crap out of them. All right, now we all got to start watching. Yeah, now we got to tune in. Finally, watch a W. Unless everybody just kind of tuned out because I, maybe it's maybe it was that Cowboys there's just, haters. There's just no way. There's just no way you, as a fan of a team, tuned like I've not watched the Browns a lot, but I don't I don't ever stop checking the score. Oh no, I, I agree with you, but I'm I'm curious I'm in, if it's, I'm in the first couple of drives and then I'm because in the I, red so zone. the the Pats Cowboys game was the highest rated well, yeah. NFL game since '96. It's a close game. It's two monster teams. Yes, but I think the other side of this is Cowboys fans were probably still watching. Yes. It, because any NFL number is going to be massive anyway. True. So I'm wondering if the people that were tuning in to watch the Cowboys lose once they got up by like two, three touchdowns. Was there another big game that afternoon? Usually they do no. a really good job of surrounding the Cowboy afternoon games with crap. Because yeah, they're it was trying crap. to artificially inflate these numbers. Oh, there was there was nothing else going on. Yeah, I didn't think so. So, yeah. I mean, that. Yeah, the Raiders. Were the Raiders a late game? Yeah, Raiders, Raiders and uh, Jags. Jags, that's it. Yeah. And then there was probably a Chargers game. That's a garbage game. Yeah. So, huh. that was it. it it's uh, 49ers, maybe? 49ers-Falcons. That was early. I think that was a noon game. No way that was a noon game. It was in San Francisco. Doesn't matter. They'd have to kick off at 9 o'clock in the morning. Or 10 o'clock. Oh, yeah. that probably. <laughs> it wasn't a noon game, by the way. It was a late game. Okay, so so maybe 49ers. I bet, I bet there was a lot. Of, I'd, I'd be curious to see, did that take the ratings? Probably so, because it was a close game. It was a great game, and, yeah. and it was a great game from start to finish. Yeah. Like, it was actually entertaining. No, you're right. You're we right. never do NFL recaps anymore. Can we take, like, three minutes and talk about... I make I make, I make, make a point. I make it a priority to make fun of the Cowboys. I, I make it true that I don't like them, and I like making fun of them. Their misery yeah. entertains me. I, I'm really tired of referees, A, who are just already bad at your jobs. This is not a damn semantics class, okay? When he says we want to kick, everybody in the whole world knows what the hell he's talking about. Oh, but we He just said he wanted to kick. He didn't say he wanted to receive in the second half. And they want to, all right, he's going to kick in the first half, and they want to receive in the second half. And so they get the ball twice. Can we stop? Why the hell is this so complicated? That's, no, he so he he actually misheard him. Like he did well, say no, Well he no the first thing out of his mouth was is we want to kick. We want to kick. How is that not an appropriate thing for saying we would like to kick off to them? That means We want the ball in the second we half. We get the ball in the second half. Because nobody in their right mind no, would kick twice. Why is it allowed for you to get the ball twice? Like it, that doesn't make like sense to you me. You have the option to either Choose to kick or receive, or you can choose a direction. But you can't choose to kick and then not get the ball in the second half. That's just the opposite end of the coin, and the rules are set up. to. And, and I get that that's not how the rules are set up, but that is the purpose and and the 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 letter of the rules, the, the meaning of the rules. And there's zero scenarios where somebody would not want the ball in the second half if they didn't take it in the first half. Yeah. But this is this is a situation where the referees want to make it about them. And you're really bad at your jobs already as a collective group. You don't want any more attention than you got. Oh, but, but I heard him say kick, and that's what he said first. So that's what we're going with. He didn't get to change his mind. No take backs. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I was I was so on the Cowboys as soon as that happened. I was so on them. It just pissed me off. Well, it did feel like they took that and just absolutely ran with it. Yeah, I mean, they, and then they don't tell them until after halftime is over. So the Cowboys have set their entire second half up to kick off again, and the Rams have set the entire second half up to to get the ball again. And then they're like, "Hey, by the way, nah, we're we fixed it, and we're doing it right." And like Sean Payton's like, right, "Hang on, I got." Well, not Sean Payton. Or, uh, so, yeah, Sean McVay. Sorry, yeah. we we do this all the time with all those Johns. Um, like yeah, like I don't know. Whoa, well, wait a minute. I've already got, like, a game script and everything ready. Hey, what, what happened? And then on the other side, well, we don't have any game script. Because yeah. we don't know when we're getting the ball back. How are you just going to flip I'm, it on us now? I'm with you. It's it's 
completely ludicrous. It's I'm glad the Cowboys kicked their ass. I and I and that's saying something for Chris to say. I that. haven't said that in a lot. There have been Maybe times. Eh, no, there have been times when they played the Ravens before, and I really hated the Ravens. <laughs> but but there are a few. There are a few times that I have said that I want them to kick someone's ass. I was really glad yeah. to see it. Now you're right about that. All right, so sorry. How about this ball? On my rant. Cowboys and Eagles. God, I, this is one of these teams is hosting a playoff game. So it's so easy just to pick the Cowboys because I think when they're at their best, they are better than the Eagles. Yes, but at the same time, I don't know when they're going to be at their best. Sunday they were at their best, but that don't mean we're going to get that this week. Agreed. Because if you think that you you didn't watch the Jets game, well, I will, I will you, tell you, you this: watch a lot of games that they played. The majority of the games that they have lost have been against really good competition. The majority. The majority. That's why I said that, not all. I I don't I don't think the Eagles are good. I don't think And either, the Eagles wide receiver core is is nothing. Really bad. But man, they're starting to figure out how to run the football and teams can run the football on the Cowboys. Can they though? I think so. Man, I I just I don't think so. Like I, I think I think the Cowboys defensive line and those linebackers like they will be able to to slow down, especially if it's the only thing they can do, right? I mean, am I crazy? Yeah, I mean, maybe you definitely can put eight in the box, and you can play man to man. And I don't think I mean you might be. Able and to I don't play think nine. there's you. You might be able to play this this Eagles team nine in the box because it, who's going to beat you if you put the skill player, the receiving core, like the tight ends, maybe, but if, like if you put the receiving core for the Patriots and the Eagles on the same team, and you picked the best of the best from those teams, the Bengals are head and shoulders better than them at wide receiver. <laughs> yes. The Dolphins are head and shoulders better than them at wide yes. receiver. Like, and then it's not close, by the way. No, not even, not even. And close. You're talking about two teams that people picked to be in the Super Bowl together this year. And we're just in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, and there's ne'er a receiver on the roster that anybody would touch. Hmm. And you can't say Jules because he has gotten old and slow. He cannot get open. Good yeah. thing he can catch trash balls because he is covered like a blanket every throw. Unless somebody just falls down or they get a pick play. Yeah. I mean, I mean that, that's a, that that's a it. valid point. It's the, the, in the, in the, in the, and the Eagles aren't any better. No. They are not any better. No. You're right. Now, thankfully, Miles Sanders has turned into a man. Oh, 100%. A, a, that guy has developed into kind of what a lot of people thought he's going to be a stud. Well, It so took him a while to get here. At, at Penn State, they all said that he was not as good as Saquon. That's right. And I, I think in the NFL, maybe I would beg to differ. Well, like, it's, Saquon's it's still hard, explosive. It's but hard like, to judge Saquon because last year he went off, but the whole offense was around him. This year, Shermer's trying to do so many other things. Well, and, and Saquon got hurt and everything the else. The rest of the team sucks so but bad. I, Nobody's I, afraid of, of Daniel Jones at all. Sanders is a different type of player, and he looks like he is built for the NFL. He didn't at the beginning of the season. No, not but at the I, beginning. I think but this it, is a rookie learning how to play running back yes. in the league. And by the end of the year, you're no longer a rookie. Man, I think this dude is a stud. Yeah, now, I agree. Now, can he? Can they build an offense around him to beat the Cowboys? I think it's going to be hard if we get the good Cowboys. Yeah, if we get if we get Hyde, and not Jekyll or Jekyll and not Hyde, whichever the crazy one is. <laughs> man, I don't, I don't know, I don't know that the Cowboys can beat anybody. Yeah, you you might be right. And now they're now they're a favorite on the road. It's so scary. I thought this game was going to be a one point line by the Cowboys, close to a pick 'em. Well, it was a pick 'em mode open. That's right. They got bet to the, to the Cowboys. I'm rolling with it. I, I I like the Cowboys minus three here. All right, I, I'm I do too, but I I think it's I think it's wrong. I think it's Wait, wrong. Do you want to go with the Eagles? No, I'm not going with the Eagles. I'm not betting it. But this is big games. We make picks on big games. I'm picking the Cowboys. All right, Cowboys. Next one up. This is the third game. We are moving into we'll roll. Gillette. Okay. Foxborough. Nothing Look, to see here. 3.30 p.m. on Saturday. Saturday game. For you boys, that means it's a short week, right? A 
Okay. <laughs> By a day. By a, okay. I mean, it, it, it matters a little bit, right? NFL Network, Patriots are a six-and-a-half-point favorite at home against the Buffalo Bills. Bills got a big win set, or Sunday night against the Steelers. The over-under is 38. Can both of these defenses score enough points to hit over that? Man, I don't know. This Look, looks like a 17-10 to 10 ball game. I don't know that the Patriots can't score at least one or two offensive touchdowns. Maybe one. Okay, one and two field goals. This this looks... And then two defensive scores. That 38 gets tight. And the Bills just, gonna take the ball. And the Bills gonna take the ball too. I don't see it. I think I would go under, but it's the defenses are going. You think the score. Bills would take the ball? Like you, you think yes. they will get it from Tom? Oh yeah, yeah. Nobody's open. Tom has to throw. They're not going to run the ball all the time. Yeah, but uh, but so they have to throw the ball. Tommy's thrown a ton of ton of interceptions this year. Yeah, you know I, why? It, because nobody's open. But He's not not a throw. ton at home. Like, that's the thing. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where they play, Gary. At some point in time, if the guys can't get open, NFL cover corners are going to take the ball away. You can't <sighs> throw everybody open if they don't have skill. I mean, you got a, you got a point, and the Bills are on one right now. I mean, they got they got four interceptions off uh Trey off White is just Ooh. a stud. Yeah. If, if I, I'll tell you if this. Gilmore wasn't, wasn't doing what he's doing right now. Trey White could easily be in consideration for defensive player of the year. The the Pats need this game. Oh, they need it. Like the Bills are already in the playoffs. The Bills and would even have if the to Bills have the Patriots, out. they would have to win out and they would need the Patriots to lose out, which means they have to lose to the Dolphins next week in Gillette. Yeah. The odds of them winning the division are slim to none. I do think the Pats need this cuz they need that buy. Yeah. They need 2 weeks to prepare for Kansas City. Or whoever the hell plays Kansas City if they happen to beat them. Yeah. Whoever it is that plays Kansas City. I mean, City I would pick the Pats. I'd lay the six, six and a half, whatever it is. I I would take the Pats. But I'm never picking against them. If I had to advise somebody on a dog this week that I like, I'd say take the Bills. Because I think six points is a lot of points in a game that we don't think 20 points is going to be scored. Well, I will tell you this. Um, I'm going to take the Pats because I think they're still on that pissed off rampage mode. Yeah. I, I and just, it's a division game in Gillette that they absolutely have to have. They are going to have a game against plan a ready. team that they just have psychologically beaten the hell out of for 20 years and a team with a quarterback that oh, no. is not no. even close Ste- to Tom. Stephon Brady. Gilmore is going to, going to just continue to, to ex- yeah. expose all these. And it's not just him, by the way. I mean, it could, it could be, one of seven or eight guys on this defense that's going to take the ball away. Yeah, so I'm I'm taking the Pats here. Like I, I've got it under a touchdown. I feel good about that. Singletary scares me a little bit. Oh yeah, people I mean, can, people he can scares run. everybody. People can run on the Pats. No, I did a little bit. I like the under though. Oh, a hundred percent. Defensive on the scores under. are going to scare the under though. Yes, it's not a lock. It's not one that I would just bet the farm on. No, but you can bet a little bit and have fun with oh, it. Oh yeah. That's that's the worst thing. It's it's not under till it's over, right? No, it's right. It's, a, <laughs> or it's not over till it's under, or yeah. whatever the the <laughs> phrase is. Next one up, the Saints going to the Tennessee Titans. Titans are uh, are getting three here. Sunday, twelve p.m. It's on Fox Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Titans lost last week. They obviously still have a shot at the playoffs. Yes. But, like a lot, so if the Ravens win this week, they're probably not going to play Lamar next week. So that helps out the Steelers because, in the case of a tie, that doesn't help anything. The they're Steelers playing. get. That's not true. That, 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 Lamar's going to play every week. I assure you of that. You think so? Yeah. They're not letting the Steelers in the playoffs. You may have a valid point. So, either way. Regardless of all the other mess, the Titans still have to win. Titans are still a good team. Let's let's not get it confused. And while the Saints just beat the hell out of the Colts. That ain't a good Colts team. Tights ain't the Colts. No. This, de- this defense is not that defense. That Colts team was really good early. And really banged up right now. And then they just don't have anybody. No. At receiver, that defense is was good, not great. And they're hurt. And they're on the field constantly. Yeah. No, that that there's nothing you can do. There's just nothing you can do. Nope. You're I, right. While I am a huge fan of the Saints and what they are doing and how they play football, I, 
you're walking into Tennessee with just just swinging. Oh yeah, and the Titans, the Titans are buckled up and saying we we got something to fight. This, for. this is an interesting game because the Saints are still fighting for a bye, and right. the Titans are just fighting to get in. They're, they're fighting to get in now. If you get the Bucks to beat the Texans this week, you still got a shot at, at you got a shot at winning the division. To, you got to go to Houston and win them. But yeah, yeah, you still now, got a shot at the and and division. to be fair, like I understand that Houston beat them by three, and it like it got close late because of that last touchdown. But honestly. That hundred yard pick six yep. or whatever, you know, yep. the interception return. Um, that I mean, that flipped the game. That's a fourteen point swing. Yep. And you don't have that one bad play, and the whole game is completely different. I, I just couldn't so, imagine the Houston's. I, it, that game shocked me. Out of all the games that I picked and all the games that I bet last week and that I got wrong, and the ones I got right, no, nothing surprised me more than Houston's defense. Just. Uh, yeah, shutting down the Titans for a large point of that game. I was surprised. Uh, like that is but, not how. But, if Houston beat them, that was not how I saw them beating them. But that that also is not super surprising for me because I told you I'm not betting on the Titans again for the rest no, no, of the no. year. Do you think it was just a Tannen Hill was due for a bad game, and so now honestly they, it wasn't even a bad game. No, really, like, it, it was just a bad couple of plays. It was just weird. Yeah, it was it was a a strange divisional game. And, and they it was lost. just due to make mistakes where he couldn't make mistakes. Yeah. Because in the past six games, he just didn't make these mistakes. Yeah. That, I, that's probably part of it. Um, Bad time for that to happen. Normally. Bad time like, for that to happen. You want the crap game this week against a really good team like the Saints, and you got the win over the Texans. Yeah, you would you would prefer that. Because <laughs> now you got to beat the Saints. Now you got to beat the Saints and the Texans again. So well, Yeah, but you um, don't beat the Saints. Beating the Texans does nothing for you. No, I agreed. You're done. Which, it, if they lose to the Saints, it would not shock me in the least to see them go and beat Houston oh, yeah. at Houston. Because right? that's what they do. Just to show their fans, F you. Yeah. F you. We, I mean, we be, could have been great for you, but screw you guys. It, it, or the or it, they do. can win this one and then lose next week, and they'll be exactly what they have been for the last three seasons, which is 9-7. and seven. Yep. That is exactly what they are. It's a 9-7 yeah. and seven franchise. God, I know. Which irritates the crap out of me. It's so hard. It's so... so hard. <laughs> I do like the Titans here because they do play tough. And, I know. I want to you know, pick them so bad. Saints on the road on a short week after Monday Night Football, all that kind of mess. We've talked about those numbers before. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'll go with the Titans here. I'm going to go with them. There is a little Saints outdoors in the cold. Like, they've kind of fixed some of those outdoor issues in the past. But a lot of those games that they play really well outdoors are – September, October, maybe yeah. early November when it's, you know, but we're we're getting 50, right up on Christmas time. It's it's going to be in the high 30s, low 40s, probably rainy, nasty. Yeah. That's not Saints football. No. I I, I think I do like the Titans here. Yeah. Man, it's scary as hell. That's uh, look, these this, any this ending week of lines I have I there's not a single game that there's one. There's one game that I love, don't like, love. And you can find that in the gambling picks. You can find that in the gambling picks. But like, other than that, man, I don't like a damn one of these games. <laughs> man, all, there's gonna be really fun to watch. This will be the least I bet all year this week. In this game, there is not a single outcome that will surprise me. No, I could see the Saints blowing them out. I could see the Titans blowing them out. Say, I could see a Titans, close win either if, way. If the Titans beat them by thirty, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, Saints come in with the big swing and dick, just feeling like they can't lose. And the Titans are backed up against the wall and just say, no, we're just going to beat the hell out of you. Yeah. It's going to be cold and nasty, and we're going to make you turn the ball over. And, yeah, I could absolutely see yeah, We're going to run the football 60 times. So, yeah, I, and you're not going to be able to stop it. And yeah. You're going to know that we're doing it. And it's just one of those things where you're right. Any outcome would not surprise me at all. That that's, I, So I'm taking your advice on this. And any game where it's you know it you looks like it's take close. Take the team with the head start. Take the team that's already got the head yeah. start. Hey, let me ask you a question. Get back to the recap. Spend a little more time on this game than we probably should. Did you find it annoying? Were you angered by which you're you're a pretty even kill guy? You don't get higher low or anything, uh, or or did you find it funny when the referees took away Drew Brees's uh, record breaking TD with a complete bullcrap offensive PI? So I thought it was funny if for no other reason than 
Of course, there was the no question. Were... There was no question when I saw the flag, they were celebrating, and I was like, "That's coming back," and they're not getting this touchdown. I wish I was somewhere where I could live bet this is going to be a field goal. Yep. They're not scoring because they everybody was celebrating, blew all the excitement they had <laughs> to look around and be like, "Huh? What?" Like you saw Sean Payton like walking with like the red hanging like. Am I going to challenge this? Is this really Is this really how we're going to do this? Yeah. And Roger Sherman from The Ringer had a great tweet, which he's an unbelievable follow. Very funny guy. Um, tweeted out, is like, what would be great? What would be really funny is if the rest of the game, they just found ways to take touchdowns off the board <laughs> to keep him from getting the record today. I mean, That's you, just a, such a league thing to do. You, you want to talk about uh, fans that already believe that I, everybody's I, out to get them? I, Here's Ooh. the thing, man. I don't know that they're wrong. I don't think they're wrong. I either. told you, I fully believe. I'm now in full conspiracy mode. The only reason, all because it's every sports league that we follow. It doesn't matter college, pros, basketball, football, baseball. It doesn't matter. Every sports league we follow is so bad at officiating, and then there are times when we think they're just throwing games. I, I think it's plausible deniability. I'm in full conspiracy mode. We have to be bad all the time so that when we want to be bad specifically against somebody, we can, and there's no case to be made. We yep. our, our only evidence is, is how can you say we're screwing you? We're bad always. Oh, yeah. I screw up everything. I'm not just intentionally hurting you. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Yes, I am. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm I'm in full conspiracy mode right now. I believe it, and nobody will convince me otherwise. I'm I'm 100 with you. I found it funny at first, and then I went on Twitter, and all the Saints people, because I follow all the LSU thing, that they they were so pissed off. They were irate, and it was hilarious. I, th I think they're right. I just found it funny because it's almost it's it's just it's too, comical at this yes, point. Yes, it's it's that's it. It is yeah. past the point of getting mad. It's just funny now. Yes. It's just like, uh, this is not real. No, we're, living, we're living in, in some weird made-up world where I'm I'm the only guy that doesn't know this is all fake. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Let's, uh, let's move on to the fifth game. The Rams are going to the 49ers. The 49ers are a six-and-a-half-point favorite. Losers at home last week to the Falcons. This is of a Saturday Altitude. night game. Prime Saturday, time, Saturday, yep, seven fifteen p.m. Central, Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. The 49ers, It It's it's kind of funny that they have been propped up on this pedestal along with the Ravens for weeks on end now, and you look at the record, and I mean, what are they five hundred over the last six weeks? Like yeah, they, they get the big win at the Saints. They come back home. They lose to the Falcons. Yeah, like it. Nothing about this makes sense whatsoever. But two of those losses are hard fought. Oh yeah, crazy losses. This was a great game. This is the only bad loss of the bunch. And the NFC is so top heavy and so close and so tight right now between four teams: um, Green Bay, Saints, Seahawks. Uh, 49ers. Yeah. I think all of the praise and accolades is very warranted. They've earned yeah, all that. I agree. I think they're that good. And I think they just got caught in the fist fight against the Ra uh, the, the Falcons this week. And I Who think, have been playing well. Well, and I think I think it's a little bit, not a letdown, but, man, they took so many blows. I mean, they, they had. What's well, the whole reason why I bet that, the Falcons last week? That's and right. It's it, body blow theory. You have been through a gauntlet. You're getting to go home. That's right. And when you get home, it is comfortable. That's right. And, I mean, oh, yeah. we just went and beat the Saints in New Orleans. Of course, we're going to beat the Falcons. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And then you we get... We were in a fight against Seattle. We were in a yeah. fight against the Ravens. We were in a fight against the Saints, and they kind of beat the hell out of the Saints. Yeah. But it was a back-and-forth game. And, just, and crazy they high scoring. I mean, they didn't beat the hell out of them. Like, they, they had to score well, they just in the last minute. It, was, yeah. it wasn't a body blow game. It wasn't no. a hard defensive game. Like we kind of all thought it was going to be. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a everybody scores, everybody gets lots of points kind of game. Um, and Wait, which quarterback on. would you rather have right now? Like, if you were the 49ers, would you rather have Jimmy G or would you rather have Josh Allen? I heard somebody talking about this the other day. I think Josh about, Allen, the rookie, Josh Allen, Josh Allen, the yeah for the Bills, like second year. Who? 
Is that a real question? People are asking that on TV. No, well, I think it was Roser and uh, and Verno. Like, think about it. Like, uh, okay. Roser, big 49ers fan. I'm thinking about it. And he was like, "Man, I think I'd probably rather have Josh Allen right He's now." He's wrong. He's just. Wrong. He, he said Jimmy G can't throw. He's wrong. It was. It was not a good game last week. One week does not make stats. No, agreed. Agreed. What? What a. What a. What a. I love Roser. What a foolish thing to say. <laughs> Hang on. A guy that cannot throw against one of the best defenses in the league, the Saints have been. 26 for 35 for 349 yards, four TDs. That guy, you would rather have that guy? Josh Allen couldn't put those stats up if you gave him eight quarters. (laughs) Against Arizona, 31 in every defensive category. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Roser. What are you doing? Don't get off my boy Jimmy. Are you crazy? It may not. It may not have been Roser. I think it was Roser. I think I heard it on their show. That's crazy. Pretty sure I heard it on their oh, show. Oh, he's a smart kid. He didn't but, know that. That's not. That's not right. That's, that's not it. right. Hey, I'm just saying. I mean, it. Jimmy G. He's not allowed one bad game after four just grudge match <laughs> games. Really? Are we doing this now? I mean, it's, can we it's go like, look in Drew Brees' record for the last four weeks? Josh Allen has been pretty good this year. No, he had not throwing the football. He no, not throwing not. the football. So you're worried about he can't throw the football. Can he run as good as Josh Allen? Probably not, but he doesn't have to. I mean, that's a valid point. You got you got a valid point there. Either way, let's talk about this ball game. That's insane, Rose. The Rams got destroyed by the Cowboys last week. Mm-hmm. Is there any prayer of them coming back and being able to win this game? Because I think the 49ers, like it, the Falcons got their attention. Yep. And they realized, oh, crap, we can't take a week off. And they have to have every divisional win also because yeah. they're in a fight. And the first tiebreaker, if for some reason they split, so yeah, it's going to be divisional games. For yeah. Them. Um, no, there's no chance. There's no chance to have a letdown. And the Rams are beating teams that don't put pressure on Jared Goff. The 49ers will absolutely put pressure on Jared Goff. 100%. Any team, there's a reason the Cowboys were able to get them. And, and make him look so any team that pressures golf, he's done. If golf can sit back there for 10 seconds, they're really hard to beat. And Sean McVay is an offensive genius. But when he's pressured, golf is not a good quarterback at all. Yeah. I don't think this game is close. I don't think it is either. I'm taking 49ers minus six and a half. Yeah, I'd take a minus like I'd a, take a minus over a touchdown. If you told me it was seven and a half, would you I'd, take it would you take a double digits? I don't know that I'd go double digits, but I would I would probably go two double digits. I mean, I'd probably go nine, nine and a half. If I could get an alternative line with really crazy good odds, like you can on alternative lines, or you yeah. can take them, I would I would play that. Yeah, I, I so think if I you're agree somewhere with you. in Vegas, that's about the only place you can do that at. Um, yeah, you can, we you we have not disagreed on a single game so far. I know that's pretty scary. Well, hey, the last time we did it, we went four and one. Well, then so, that's really good. Yeah, so that, that's all right. Maybe I should bet on more games than I'm going to. I mean, we'll see. I don't like any dogs. That always scares the shit out of me. Yeah, that that's frightening. Uh, the only dog that we have here is the Titans, and that's the one game I'm definitely not. That's betting. that's a I'm coin flip. I'm definitely not betting that. Game. That's that's a coin flip. <laughs> so, that's not true. I might bet that. Game. Let's uh let's go on and do our rapid fire right quick. We have got the Chiefs at the Bears on Sunday Night Football. Bears getting five and a half at home. Bears didn't look real good against the Packers, but that was on the road. They get to come back home. Interesting matchup between Andy Reid and Matt Nagy. Nagy? Nagy? Nagy. Nagy. Uh, interesting matchup with that, but I just I don't see the Bears being able to score enough points, and I, I think Mahomes is going to put up points on everybody. Yeah, I do and too, so, and I'm I'm done riding this Bears train. They're bad. Yeah. Coach needs to be they – need, they need a new coach. They need a new quarterback. They need a new coach? As soon as you know you have a losing hand, you fold it. Do you know that? Yeah, I think so. What? Why? I think so. Because their offense isn't very creative at all. I mean, they're seven and seven. They're, it may not be creative because they don't have somebody that they can run it with. That's just not true. That's just simply not true. You can find a way to 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 get yards and points with anyone. You just can. You just can. I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't know how he, much better he is. How much worse do you think he is than Josh Allen? Because I don't know that he's markedly Trubisky? worse. Yes. I think he's significantly worse. I see. I don't. I, think I, if, I don't think Trubisky can run. I think At least you, Josh oh, Allen no, can Trubisky run. Trubisky can absolutely move. You know why you don't know that? Because Nagy doesn't put him in any situations to do it. He's crazy athletic. What are you talking well, about? Well, but uh, Okay, so he's also like coming off injuries. 
Oh, uh, bullshit. It doesn't matter. He can still move. <laughs> he can still move. I mean, a little bit, yeah. You know why you don't know any of this? Because they're not drawing up plays. I guarantee you, you flip-flop both those guys and you switch the offenses. The Bills are no different. They're no worse at all with Trubisky. And the Bears look exactly like they look. I'm telling you. It's creativity. It's game plan. It's scheming. And that's crazy. At some because point he, in time, you have to coach who you got. And he comes off of the Andy Reid tree. I know. So, like. Maybe you don't hire the guy that works under the genius because he's the freaking genius. You don't well, I mean, just it, rub it, off genius on somebody. Well, I mean, the Packers seem to be doing okay, right? Yeah, but that's just going to get Aaron Rodgers. I know, Rogers. I know. That's they, Aaron Rodgers. That's Aaron Jones, Adam Jones, Aaron Jones, and... and Mike and, Pettin. And Mike Pettin. And, and just a lot of dudes on defense. A lot, of, it, a lot of it's Mike Pettin. Completely different scenario. I'm with you. I think at you. some point in time... You have to scheme something to be successful, and they haven't done it at all. They beat up on the Lions. Congratulations. I am curious to see what, what kind of changes they it's will It's also make. a Ryan Pace situation. Got to go. Push that guy out a window. He's <laughs> a guy that gave up two first-round picks for Miss Trubisky to move up one spot. Yeah. When he could have traded back 40 spots and got him. Uh, yeah, 100%. Well, or, or you could have drafted Deshaun Watson or – Pat Mahomes, or, I mean, any number of different ones, right? That's, that's right. So, yeah. Congratulations. Ooh, Chicago, I'm sorry for you. Yeah, I'm, we're not making picks here, but I'd, I'd be rolling Chiefs all day on that yeah. one. All day. When it, when when they destroyed the Broncos last week, like, yeah, that hurt. That I, really bad. I felt pretty good about, like, one, they went into Foxborough on a yeah. nasty day and got a win. And, yes, I understand there was a lot of no, shenanigans. They, 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 they but they got a win. win. They got a win. That's and they get a win. In the snow, no, yeah. you know. It, it, this offense is going to score. They're fine. Yeah, they're going to score. Uh, Saturday, 12 p.m., the Texans go to Tampa Bay. And the Bucks are catching three points here. I I kind of like Tampa Bay's been rolling. Yeah. I mean, what is it, four straight now? Yeah. And, and they destroyed the Lions, which I, I understand a lot of teams are destroying the Lions. But the Bucks look really good right now. Like, they it, obviously, no hope for the playoffs, whatever. But Arians has got that team looking good. They are rounding into shape. They're going to make a run next year. And the Cleveland Browns threw Hugh Jackson out a window. I told you, you interview one guy. Yep. One guy. Nobody listens to me. No. And it was the one guy. Nobody ever. Who said, there's only one team I would come out of retirement for. He said it on national TV while calling a game. And he said it was the Browns. And, and they didn't even take, call him. And they and he got the the Bucks job. They didn't even call him. And and yeah, they've got what the same record right now. Yeah, but one team is going in a completely different direction than yeah. the other. Yeah. Well, and and don't get me wrong, like the Bucks are pretty talented. They are not as talented as the Browns. Hell no. So not close. Can you imagine what the team would look like with Bruce Arians? Right? I don't want to talk about it. All right, so uh, so Bucks. Dorsey, call me. You're making some bad. Moves. Call me. I'll help yeah. you. I don't even charge you nothing. Texans and Bucks. Texans get that big divisional win last week. Now they got to go on the road on a Saturday. Gary, I have picked against the Texans four weeks straight, and I keep saying I they keep winning. And, and it I makes no on, sense. I come on and I say the exact same thing. I'm still not impressed. Yeah. I'm still not impressed. Now, I'm kind of impressed on how the hell they their defense showed up against the Titans. I don't know how they held the Titans to so few points. I don't know the answer to that. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm still not impressed. <laughs> Last uh, last game we'll talk about this week, Ravens at the Browns. Browns catching 10 points at home. Uh, playoffs are done. We, we should not be speaking of this Browns team other than the fact that they're a disaster. And if you like to watch a disaster, that's entertaining. Be great, be terrible, just be entertaining. They're terrible and entertaining instead of being terrible and boring. The Browns put up 40 on the Ravens in Baltimore back, what, week Four? Four, five. Yeah, it was four. Because it was after week three. It was after that Rams game I went yeah. to. Yeah. Because they they were they were ten and or uh, two and two. Yeah, the Ravens two and were two, yep. and hadn't lost since. So is They're there a double any, digit home dog? I can't believe that. Is there any chance? Well, I mean, yeah, you gotta keep making these lines high because the Ravens are just dismantling everybody. And I understand that they played the Jets last Thursday. I get that, but whew. Well, I don't know that we're a whole hell of a lot better than the Jets. Well, that's kind of where I'm coming from. You know? 
I bet the Jets. And I know that was a mistake looking back at it now. I didn't put a ton on it. But, man, like Monday afternoon, that line just kept – because it opened at 14. Yeah. And it kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. And it got to 17 and a half. Should have got to 20. I told you. you, you it, they gotta, it, it, it needed to go to 28. It but, needed to go but, to whatever. But I'm, just, but I'm just saying, they got to get these lines to college numbers. When the yep. good teams play the bad teams, you just got to say, this is no longer the NFL. So, I mean, what what, what would you set this line at? Well, now we're having a different conversation because <laughs> the Browns are not the Jets, as much as I like to make fun of them. And I'm so disappointed by them. I am. I am very proud, by the way. Several of my Browns friends who were giving me all kind of hell. You got to give them time. You got to give them time. I'm telling you, as soon as you know you have a losing hand, you fold it. And by week three, I went there. I watched this team in person against a, what I said, a mediocre Rams team. And You're they were right. like, "That's they made the Super Bowl last year. It's one of the best teams in football. No, sir. No, sir. They're not. I watched them play in person. They're not that good. You yeah. know who's worse? Freaking Cleveland Browns. It's a gots to go situation. Yeah. Take them out back. You got a broken horse. You take it out back. You shoot it in the head. So, it's so you figure Kitchens is done not this coming Monday, but the Monday after? Oh, I think they're going to let him finish the season. But well, I, yeah, yeah, that's what I I'm think, saying. You I got two weeks left. I think it's a gots to go situation. I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. All right. That is going to wrap up NFL Week 16 previews. Of course, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Check out all the fine stuff we got over there. The Football Picks Contest. Make sure you get entered. It is free to enter. You will win some awesome prizes from Tunica, Mississippi, who also sponsors the show every week. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on that and all the other wonderful stuff they got going on over at tunicatravel.com. Make sure and check out smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN. They got all sorts of awesome stuff over there. Pro and college gear for all your favorite teams. WIN, W-I-N, as the promo code, will get you 20% off of however big your order is. And if your order is over $40, it's going to ship for free. So go check that out. Make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Hit that like button. Leave us some comments. Anything else we need to hit? That's it, brother. I think that's it. We'll see you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.